Minister. So well, joining me now from Tel Aviv is Alon Levy, the spokesperson for the Israeli government. Thank you very much for joining us. If I can just uh, find out from you, what is the position tonight about the ground offensive? Are we close to it? Are we not close to it? What's happening? Uh, thank you for having me on the show, Kirsty. Uh, first, before I answer that, I would like to respond and say I was truly appalled to listen to that interview with the Palestinian Prime Minister. Now he was questioned three times, pressed no fewer than three times by your reporter, whether he would condemn the October 7th massacre, the worst terror attack in world history since 9-11, brutally murdered 1,400 people, and three times he refused to condemn that attack. In fact, he said that the Palestinian struggle against Israel has been going on for 100 years, 25 years before the State of Israel. Israel was even established and long before the 67. 56, I think 56 mm. years was the what, what was the uh, said, number of years that were 100 he said 100 years he so, said 100 years but but I'm going to go on and ask you a little bit later uh, about whether or not there's going to be a position where anyone will sit down with each other future but I just want to get up to speed on what is happening now why is there a hold up in the ground invasion Israel is united now around a single goal and that goal is total victory against Hamas in response to the October 7th massacre. Now, when the next stage of the Israeli operation is going to continue, I'm not going to speculate on the movement of the troops. That's going to happen in accordance with our operational needs. But the response to the October 7th massacre, that brutal murder of 1,400 people, whole families burned in their homes, children who are cuffed, families that were shot dead, tortured, mutilated. The response is going to be the, de the total defeat of the terror organization that conducted that. But I what wonder if, I wonder if the hostages, 7th. I wonder if the hostages are a factor or not, because when we have done interviews, it seems that that when the ground invasion starts, if the hostages are there, so be it. They may lose their lives. Is that true? Israeli society at the moment is sick with worry about the fate of the hostages, over 220 innocent men, women, children who are being held hostage by Hamas. One of them is Ohad. This is Ohad. He's nine years old. Yesterday was his ninth birthday. He's the hostage of Hamas. Two weeks ago, he was visiting his grandparents on the kibbutz of Ne'er Oz when Hamas death squads invaded in the morning. They brutally murdered his uncle and they took him together with his grandparents, Avraham and Ruti, both aged 78, and with his mother, Karen, into captivity as hostages into the Gaza yeah. Strip. But Here you he must... is with his parents. His father, Avi, is sick with worry. He doesn't know whether Hamas stole his son's glasses, whether he saw dead bodies. He says he's taking sleeping pills every night to try to sleep, and he wakes up in the morning and he feels guilty yeah. that he wasn't thinking about but them this at is, night. This, this is, it, it is the most terrible conflict. And you, you highlighted the plight of that little boy. But the truth, and there is no excuse. But the and truth is, is, but no the truth is that no matter what, children everywhere are suffering. Children are suffering in Gaza as well. This is this is this is a, a terrible situation where. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And, and, and you would you would accept? Can I just can I just ask you this? That you would accept that the children in Gaza who have died and have been wounded by the Israelis' airstrikes did not deserve to die. You accept Kirstie. that. The humanitarian suffering that we're seeing in response to Hamas's decision to declare war against Israel on October 7th is truly heartbreaking. And I wish we weren't in this situation and no one were getting hurt. This isn't a war that Israel started. It's not a war that Israel wanted. It's not a war that Israel even expected. But, we what, but, the, off guard but, but what happens? Surprised. But what happens is there was no aid in today. Now that affects children as well. You need to put fuel in so that the aquifers can provide fresh water. Water is a human right. So, how, all, a, so therefore, how does it how does it help your cause to make sure that children don't get the medicine? Never mind adults, but ordinary Palestinians, that children don't get the medicine they need, that children don't get food, that children don't get water. Is that any way, in a sense, to conduct this conflict? So let's set the record straight. First of all, aid is entering the Gaza Not Strip today. through the border with Egypt. Not we, today. There was a consignment of trucks, and we're hopeful that will continue. But since you mentioned fuel, it's important to know that. Hamas holds 500,000 litres of fuel in the Gaza Strip right now. I don't know whether that includes the 24,000 litres of fuel that it stole from UNRWA, from the United Nations, just a few days ago. But there is plenty of fuel in the Gaza Strip. The problem, of course, is that the terror regime that controls the Gaza Strip, that conducted the October 7th massacre, is choosing to hog that fuel is, in, order to conduct, what, very briefly, in order to continue its war against Israel. Sorry, but the fuel sorry, is so there. We're the so short there of time. plenty of it. We're very short time. I want to ask you one very uh, short, actually, final question. What the Palestinian Prime Minister said 
was that there's no leadership in Israel ready to sit down. Is there a chance of peace and peace talks between the Palestinians and the Israelis? Kirsty, I very much hope that one day we will be able to have peace in this land. But for now, we have to destroy Hamas. We have to defeat the terror organization that perpetrated the October 7th massacre because Israel cannot go back to the conditions on the 6th Thank of you. October, on the 7th of October. That cannot happen. That would leave Hamas free to butcher and behead and burn Thank again. Thank you there very much. No way Israel can afford that. Thank, Thank you, Thank you Kirstie. very much.